Food is probably the last thing on the minds of thousands of passionate Dockers supporters counting down to the do or die game this Saturday night. And while coach Ross Lyon and the players are staying focused, Alison Fan, who was a founding member of the Dockers 19 years ago, has found all the other Frio fans are having a hard time trying to keep a lid on their excitement. It's been a wonderful journey, and now Utopia is close. From the rooftops to the streets below, on Cappuccino Strip, down at the harbour. <laughs> We're all singing the same song. A chorus from the sirens. Every bit as passionate as all the men? Yeah, oh, I'm more passionate. You know, I think some of our ladies could teach the men a thing or two about football. Now, we've all been instructed by Coach Lyon and Captain Pav to not celebrate too soon and to stay cool. But after 19 years of waiting, we're not taking any notice, right? <laughs> We're trying to keep a lid on it because Ross the boss tells us that we should keep a lid on it. This was the only training session this week open to the faithful fans and though the size of the crowd made it look more like a home game, we all did as we were told, keeping it low key, trying not to distract the focus of the most important people in town. Trying, meditating every day but it's not working. <laughs> but away from the players, the purple passion is soaring. Excited, oh. nervous, uh, we've waited a long time. Oh, it, it's bursting at the yeah. seams, happiness. And we're so proud. Yeah. We're, we're so, so proud. proud. Fremantle business owners already showing their colours. Go the Dockers. I'm the auntie of um, Josh and Matthew Carr. No downturn at this Frio retailer, only record sales, with anything purple snapped up. And here, at the pulse of Fremantle, the fishing and boating harbour, pioneering seafood families like Ian Ricciardi and Victor Kalis dare to dream. We dare to dream but we must put a lid on it as our beloved coach tells us all, focus on each week. And as business people we're focused on each week. So we're focused. And after 19 years? Yes. No problem, nothing. Well that's nothing. That's how long it takes for a uh, uh, we're such a passionate group of people. More importantly, the Fremantle people, the people who back for Fremantle are a totally different breed to the rest. Like your mate. Absolutely. Ian Ricciardi. <laughs> yes. Ian, another around, Fremantle identity. We've been around for a long time as well, since the late 40s, and uh, sort of friends with Victor for such a, such a long time. Uh, football was in our blood, uh, especially when Fremantle Dockers came to Fremantle. It's called Blind Faith. So much so that you book your grand final airfares in February every year. I do. <laughs> I do in hope. I live in hope. And now I'm close to a dream, perhaps. But we must focus on each week, Alison. We mustn't think too far. But the man who's poured a chunk of his seafood fortune into sponsoring the Dockers from the very start is superstitious about putting up decorations around his waterfront restaurant too soon. No purple. No purple, no nothing. You wait. I wait. I wait until next Saturday week and... We wait to see what evolves. And then what's going to happen to this? It's going to turn into a purple circus. <laughs> As for those other Fremantle leaders, the mayor and city councillors, they've been working tirelessly for years to try to put Fremantle back on the map, luring big retailers, talking to commercial and community groups. All it's taken is one football team. As much excitement now as there has been since the America's Cup in terms of as a whole of a Frio really getting behind one, one team and one sporting event. Fremantle Mayor Brad Pettit. Everybody in Fremantle is just 100% behind the Dockers and the, the whole town is, is, is purple and everyone's just talking about it and totally getting, getting into it. And the relatively new Fremantle MLA, Simone McGurk. Everyone's so excited about this and it's tantalisingly close. So, you know, we'll be there, everyone will be there with their purple. And we've and been there since since we were playing at the Wacken, 15,000 people looking very lonely in a very large paddock. 
Now, only one more game and only one message. Go Frio! Alison's been dressing in head-to-toe purple since the Dockers' last game, and she's not alone. Purple's the only colour you'll find in plumber Steve Twite's wardrobe. And as Steve Butler found out, the die-hard Dockers fan for pas uh, passion for purple is contagious. Oh, g'day, Mon. Well, we're out here looking for the world's wildest Fremantle Dockers supporter. Somewhere like a Fremantle drive in Wellard or something. Oh, hang on. Here it is. <laughs> It's a purple passion, isn't it? Eh? It grows. Steve Twite has coloured his whole world purple. Anything that can be purple will be purple eventually. From his HSV to the kitchen kettle, his daughter's cubby house and even a bedroom. Purple is also the only colour you'll find in this Willard plumber's wardrobe. I've changed my, my work colours to, to purple as well. Uh, yeah, there is no other colour. But this Dockers diehard's ultimate tribute is his gold anchor tooth filling. I needed a bit of work done on my tooth, so I thought I, that'd be something different. <laughs> you must get a few comments about it. I do, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think it's normal, but apparently it's not. <laughs> oh, I must feel like I have to do a bit of a... <laughs> oh, mate, we normally... The path. <laughs> <laughs> Well, Steve, this is a bit of a possession here. Uh, West Coast Eagles, uh, only wooden spoon in 2010. Best 50 bucks I've ever spent, Steve. It's <laughs> <laughs> a ripper, isn't it? <laughs> Why are these two blokes so special to you, mate? Uh, that's the, the Pav, eh? God, and Hayden <laughs> Ballantyne. He's not far, but far behind. A farmer goal. He's third, and the Dockers are in front. So from God to the purple Jesus, you've got yeah. Jeff Farmer's boots. <laughs> How'd you get them? I got them after he kicked the winning goal against Adelaide. Bit of an empty cupboard here, Steve. Yeah, the empty trophy cabinet. Eh? <laughs> Hopefully, eh? we've got a spot right here. Eh? Bit beautiful, wouldn't it? It's been a, a pretty bumpy ride along the way, uh, the highs and the lows, but even there, that, it makes you stronger, doesn't it? Steve will join the Purple Army at Patterson Stadium this weekend, and he's also booked in for the big one. I didn't like to yeah, pre-empt anything, but, um, yeah, we've, we've got the grand final tickets booked, so... I'm off and racing. <laughs> well, I'm getting aboard the purple bandwagon too. And Steve, I hope your Fremantle boys can make it all the way through to their grand final. This is Steve Butler reporting from Fremantle Drive. And go Dockers!